As specified by the Constitution, the President of the United States has roles and powers which include Commander-in-Chief, Chief Executive, Head of State, Chief Diplomat, and Legislator. In addition to these, other roles and powers have developed over time. In the role of Commander-in-Chief, the President controls the United States military through the Department of Defense. Originally called the Department of War, the DOD was established by the first Congress to advise the President on military matters. Its leaders, the Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, are responsible for advising the President on the military and military situations. My job is to give the President and Secretary of Defense military advice before they know they need it. General John W. Vesey, Jr., 1984. In addition to working with the Department of Defense, the Commander-in-Chief cooperates with the House and Senate Committees on Armed Services and the Appropriation Committees that designate funding for the military. And although the Constitution gives military control to the President, his power over the military is not absolute. This power is shared with Congress, which is the only entity able to declare war. However, Presidents can commit military troops to conflict without declaring war. This has happened in the Korean conflict, the Vietnam conflict, and the operations conducted in Iraq by persuading Congress to pass resolutions that allowed the use of the military. The President can also exercise his power as Commander-in-Chief over military leaders to ensure national security goals are met. The most famous example of this was when President Truman removed General Douglas MacArthur as Supreme Commander of Allied Powers during the Korean War after MacArthur had threatened China with nuclear weapons. As Chief Executive, principally defined in Article 2, Sections 1 and 3 of the Constitution, the President is the champion of the United States Constitution, sworn to uphold its laws and oversee their execution. Two vital extensions of the Chief Executive role are those of Administrator and Crisis Manager. As an administrator, the President heads an immense bureaucracy that includes the Cabinet, government agencies, and numerous commissions. He also appoints people to bureaucratic positions and proposes agency budgets. As a crisis manager, the President handles national crises, such as the September 11, 2001 attacks. While some Presidents, such as George Bush, have received high approval ratings for their role as crisis manager, not all Presidents have handled crises so well. Herbert Hoover's approval rating plummeted after the stock market crashed and the Depression devastated the American economy. Once upon a time, my political opponents honored me as possessing the fabulous intellectual and economic power by which I created a worldwide depression all by myself. President Herbert Hoover. Article 2, Section 3 of the Constitution gives the President two additional titles, the Head of State and Chief Diplomat. As head of state, the president acts as the ceremonial leader of the nation and meets with foreign leaders. As chief diplomat, he meets with foreign diplomats, appoints ambassadors, and negotiates treaties, agreements, and understandings with foreign powers. The president's role as legislator is partially enumerated by the Constitution and partially traditional. According to Article 2, Section 3, the president must present a State of the Union message to Congress each year, typically to outline his proposed legislative package and budget. Since Franklin Roosevelt's administration, Congress has looked to the White House for the legislative agenda within the first 100 days of the administration. In response, White House personnel send bills to Congress, actively lobby individuals and groups to support the President's agenda, and use the bureaucracy to encourage the passage of favored programs and bills. It is the duty of the President to propose, and it is the privilege of the Congress to dispose. President Franklin Roosevelt, 1937. Commander-in-Chief, Chief Executive, Head of State, Chief Diplomat, and Legislator. With so many roles severely limiting their time, it has been suggested that the job of President has become too large for any one man. With so many demands on their time, Presidents are often forced to be reactive rather than proactive, responding to crisis situations as they occur rather than actively promoting their policies and agendas. As a result of these high demands, recent presidents are relying more heavily on their vice presidents.